All right. Um, by my personal Bible reading that I chose for myself that is not given to me by anything of God, but but my situations actually. What happened was again with that networking thing. Um, with the lady. Um, I guess two people are cautious about you, you know, and she she did text me back and she called me out as woman of God. Now, I think in a way that goes twofold. I think one, maybe she was trying to test me to make sure I'm not going to come to her with a whole bunch of nonsense and that I'm going to um, add a whole bunch of ridiculous lists to her, <laughs> to her life that she's not needing. So she's, you know, putting it out there, woman of God, I'm calling you woman of God. So that means that's the way that you need to come to me <laughs> because I'm not down for nonsense is basically what she was telling me by that. Now, you know, I don't really check my text. It's Google Voice. So I check it whenever I get a chance and I saw it. Uh, didn't have a chance to respond back because I don't have um, internet connection right now. But what I wanted to say is this, you know, y'all may have seen the recording that I had about the guy that, you know, he claimed to be this big old Christian, but yet he was cheating on his wife, flirting with me, talking all kinds of garbage about hate about his coworker because she was a lesbian. And, you know, like I said, it was none of my business because I don't know her personally. I should not know her personal business, you know, unless she chose to tell me or unless I inquired for you to just come to me with that gossip is nonsense <clears throat> for him to have a daughter that lives with him. That's steadily getting pregnant. You know, is she being abused? What the heck is going on? You know, why are you coming to me with this? You know, and then I'm sure he doesn't know me, but he was trying to make it like he did so that he could, um, you know, probably talk about me like he talked about his co-worker. But I don't know him. I spoke to him at a park one time. And at first I was looking up to him. He was like, he's been in the police force X amount of years, blah, blah, blah. But after speaking to him for a while, I found out he was a scumbag. And, you know, I really didn't want to have anything at all to do with him. If he kept his distance, I would be so honored and pleased. And I happened to, I talked to people, you know, I bumped into people. I talked to a police officer um, another day that happened to be at the same location and he was like, oh, that's, you know, he lied about a lot of stuff, you know? And so I'm just like, you know, if that man could just please just stay away from me. And at first he was avoiding me because he knew, you know what I'm saying? I think that, you know, his shit didn't match up. And then on top of that too, he, um, subscribed to one of my MoCo, um, added me on MoCo space or whatever. And just, and he didn't say, you know, hey, I'm such and such. He just added me and his big old face pops up, you know. It's people like that, I, you know, I don't like him at all. You know, he's bad news and I want him to stay away from me. And he does all of his sin in the name of Christianity. God, you know, God don't like those type of people. You know, give me a break. And then you coming and bringing that hate to me and wanting me to participate in it or wanting to beat me down with that hate. And I think that's what it was after watching me for a while. He saw that, you know. I don't have anything against him. Like, I'm not going to verbally put him in his place or whatever like that. So he's coming to me with this garbage. Um, and I really don't appreciate it. And that's why, you know, when she calls me a woman of God, you know, I'm nothing but what I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm just me. I don't claim to be anything more or less because if I do, I, you know, that would be a bald face lie. All I can be is me. Me. Who I am. And that's what God says, you know, I am that I am, you know, he's no more, no less, you know, everybody's walking around calling folks Christian, Jesus Christ didn't say he was a Christian, he was just Jesus Christ, you know, let people be who they are, I'm just me, you know, I'm not, you know, any title. Now, if, you know, judge me by my actions, call me by my actions, do not label me, you know, do not, do not label me because you're going to be disappointed. You know, do not label me. Hopefully the compilation of all the actions that I am and am not are something that, you know, does not assault you mentally, spiritually, physically, or any way. But I can't claim to be more than I am. I'm just me. I can't claim to be that label, you know. And again, I didn't have a chance to respond. And maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes God watches out for fools and babes. But, you know. Um, and speaking of that, the Bible verse I'm talking about is Exodus. And I don't know which one it is. It's Exodus. Exodus. What chapter is this? Because what I did was just a search for the phrase. Exodus chapter 3, verse, I believe it's like 11. And it says, And Moses said, Exodus three eleven. And Moses said unto God, 
who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. He said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together. And say unto them, The Lord of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, visited you, and seen that which is sent to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring, bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. And ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go. We beseech thee three days, journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. Um, I don't like labels, not at all. Because what it is, is falseness, you know. Labels, job titles, you know, because... What happens when somebody perceives you not to fit that? You know, do you cease to be? No, you still are, and you still are a valuable human being and a valuable person. So I am what I am. You know, um, I'm just me. And me isn't even defined adequately by my name. I'm just me. Because if someone decides that if I get amnesia and I don't have a name anymore, I'm still me. It doesn't divide you who I am. If you call me, or if you see, um, attitudes and behaviors that you think are fitting to be um, what you would like to be a, a person with this label um, and somehow I do something to make your perception change that doesn't make me less valuable of a person <laughs> or change who I am I still am who I am you know so I just wanted to share that. Um, I won't post it now publicly, <laughs> which is a good thing. But you know, I'm very honest and open in my communications. I think that's how you learn and that's how you grow. I'm about to um, get up and do my thing for real today. Um, my feet have healed. It took 24 hours. And I'm going to tell y'all, I was so tired when I got back last night, like 9 o'clock or however, the night before last time. Like within probably an hour, I was knocked out dead sleep and I slept all the way through for like four hours straight just knocked out slept hard four hours straight after getting back and then um i woke up like maybe one or two and you know a couple of hours you know went to the bathroom that type of thing went back to sleep woke up at like six something in the morning no eight maybe eight six something in the morning eight six i might have sat around at eight o'clock got up um did my little foot soap came back and was waiting for my feet to heal by 11 o'clock. My feet was still throbbing after soaking my feet. And um, then I got into the internet thing. So I got kind of got thrown off track. And then the internet was out by 3.30. So um, I was trying to kill time, waiting for the internet to come back on. And um, what ended up happening, <laughs> I didn't realize so much time had passed. Next time I knew it was like one something in the morning. True story. And I couldn't believe it because I thought only a couple of hours had passed. So I closed everything down, shut it down, started it again to see if it was working. And it wasn't. And I saw the time. I was like 1 a.m. I was like, no, that can't be right. But it was. So you can get really wrapped up in stuff. And it wasn't productive stuff, sad to say. Because I was, for some reason, I'm, I crutch. I use the internet as my crutch to... Um, to be productive and I need not to do that because it's not always you know that's the method of control somebody has over you if you use your internet the internet for it to be your source of productivity what happens when it goes down you know so if somebody wants you to be unproductive all they have to do is shut your internet down and you know they will get nothing out of you bad thing but true so um that's it for my morning blogs they won't get posted until this afternoon, unfortunately. 
Oh, but um, yeah. So now I need to find out what to wear. Something that's suitable for church and suitable to go look at jobs and stuff like that. Um. So I don't know what I'm gonna wear. I'm trying to think. I mean, I have a couple of casual things to wear, but now that I'm starting this networking thing, and the church people don't, the church lady, the church, nobody else pays attention to me, but that particular lady, I don't think cares. But, um, but you know, I want to be more um, professional. I feel would feel only feel comfortable being more professional because if I'm dressing like a teeny bopper all day, then a teeny bopper is what you get when I present myself to you. And that's not what I want to present. So. Anyways, I'm out. I'm going to hit that guy up and let him know tomorrow, 6 o'clock, it's on like Donkey Kong. It's on like Donkey Kong. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, for our poetry meeting, um, poetry management thoughts meeting. And I want him to be prepared to share some of his poetry with me, even though we're um, coming from like a managerial side. I want him to be able to share um Cause I haven't seen anything that he has, so I wanna I wanna be able to hear some of what he has. And he's heard a lot of what I had. I didn't know I had so much out until I googled myself, and I was like, oh my god, I can make a whole book off of this. So hopefully he's not gonna take my stuff. Um, but I want to say thank you to him for you know taking the time to review and research me, <laughs> and I guess research me and um. You know, taking the time to listen to and have an opinion on some of my things and some of, you know, just, just of, of, you know, my works and skills and the ways I go about it and that kind of thing. Anyways, goodbye because I need to get up and get dressed and I have no idea what I'm wearing today.